In this video, I'll be explaining how you can study in medical school for free thanks to the Dr. Parasabayan Act. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Luis and I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. So last January 2021, President Duterte signed into law the Dr. Parasabayan Act in an effort to give more opportunities to aspiring students to pursue the dream of becoming a medical doctor. This is to address the existing problem that the Philippines lacks a lot of doctors. According to the WHO, there should be about 10 doctors for every 10,000 people. However, according to the DOH statistics back in 2017, there are only about 4 doctors for every 10,000 people. And if you look into the statistics even further, you'll see that places like NCR has an adequate amount of doctors around 10 for every 10,000, whereas other places such as Region 4A has less than 2 doctors for every 10,000 people. I'll be dividing this video into two parts. The first half will cover the benefits of the scholarship and the partner schools that you can avail it from, while the second half will cover the requirements that you need to fulfill as a recipient of the scholarship. With this new support from the government, the bill aims to cover many of the expenses that comes with being a medical student. This includes free tuition and other school fees, allowance for prescribed books, supplies, and equipment, clothing or uniform allowance for your uniform, white coat, and scrubs, allowance for dorm or boarding house, transportation allowance, internship fees and financial assistance during internship, medical board review fees, licensure fees, annual medical insurance, and other education-related fees or living allowances. And all of this is absolutely free. Currently, there are eight state universities that will offer this scholarship to its students. These are the Mariana Marcos State University, the University of Northern Philippines, Cagayan State University in Tuguegarao, Bicol University, Western Visayas State University, UP Manila School of Health Sciences in Leyte, University of the Philippines College of Medicine, and Mindanao State University in Marawi City. In addition, three brand new state universities will be offering the scholarship as well as soon as they open. These are the Western Mindanao State University, Cebu Normal University, and University of Southern Philippines. Also, Pamantasan ng Lusod Manila is also looking to get into this program in order to accept more students into its Doctor of Medicine program. And as the years go by, I wouldn't be surprised if more medical schools will also start offering the scholarship program as more and more schools apply to become part of it. So now that we've gone over the benefits of the program and some of the partner schools that offer it, let's go over now the requirements you need to fulfill in order to become part of the program. So in order to qualify for this scholarship, you need to be a Filipino citizen who currently resides in the Philippines. So if you're a Filipino citizen but live outside the Philippines, you probably don't qualify for this scholarship. You must also be a graduating student of an undergraduate degree program that is recognized as a prerequisite for the Doctor of Medicine program of the partner school that you are applying to. This also applies to direct entrants who are coming from the Intermed program and have finished the first two years of the degree. So I don't know if this requirement means that they'll be particular about the pre-med the applicant was from, but I assume as long as the partner school that you're applying to accepts your degree in the initial application, it should be completely fine for your application to this scholarship. The next requirement is that the applicant should have passed all the requirements for admission to the partner school as well as the DOH and CHED requirements such as acquiring the minimum NMAT percentile rank needed to pass medical school. For CHED, the minimum percentile rank required to enter medical school is 40th percentile. However, this may vary per school such as UP which requires a 90th percentile for its applicants. So once you're accepted into the scholarship program, you'll have to sign a document to show that you agree with the following conditions that are required of you as a beneficiary of the scholarship. This includes the following conditions. First, you must carry the full load of subjects required by the school and are not allowed to drop the course under any circumstances. Second, you must finish the degree program within the prescribed time frame of the institution you are enrolled in. You are, however, allowed to defer enrollment or file a leave of absence, providing that there is a justifiable reason. Third, you must undergo a mandatory internship after graduating from the 4-year MD program or as part of the 5-year MD program. This can be done at either at the base hospital of your medical school or at any DOH accredited public health facility or hospital that comply with the requirements of the internship program. Four, after completing your internship, scholars must take the board exam within one year from completion. In addition to these rules, there are also another set of rules that if you don't follow, will result in your disqualification from the scholarship. This includes accepting another scholarship while under the benefits of this one, failing to meet the academic requirements of the institution, failing to pass the physician licensure exam within five years of finishing internship, and while being a scholar, committing a gross misconduct in such a way that the state university Philippine higher education institution or community is significantly damaged. And lastly, one of the biggest requirements for this scholarship 
is a return service agreement that you have to fulfill after graduating. As with many government scholarships in this country, the Dr. Para Sabayan Act comes with a return service agreement that you have to fulfill after passing the boards. This includes one year of service for every year you are under the scholarship at any public health facility or medical facility through the DOH. This includes a government health office, a government hospital, or any government accredited health facility in the scholar's hometown, province, or the nearest municipality that is underserved. During this time, you'll receive the appropriate civil rank, salary, and benefits that come along with the job. But what if you decide not to fulfill the return service agreement? Well, the bill states that if you decide to do this, you will have to pay double the amount that was covered while you were a scholar under the bill, and non-payment of this fee will result in your inability to renew your license by the PRC. So I hope you guys learned a lot about what this scholarship has to offer. And if you want to learn about the other scholarship opportunities for medical students, check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.